an epistle to Robert Lloyd, esq. by William Cowper Tis not that I design to rob thee of thy birthright, gentle Bob, for thou art born sole heir, and single, of dear Matt Pryor's easy jingle. Not that I mean, while thus I knit my threadbare sentiments together, to show my genius or my wit, when God and you know I have neither, or such as might be. Better shown by letting poetry alone. Tis not with either of these views that I presume to address the muse, but to divert a fierce banditti, sworn foes to everything that's witty. That, with a black, infernal train, make cruel inroads in my brain, and daily threaten to drive thence my little garrison of sense, the fierce banditti. Which I mean are gloomy thoughts led on by spleen. Then there's another reason yet, which is, that I may fairly quit the debt, which justly became due the moment when I heard from you, and you might grumble, crony mine, if paid in any other coin. Since twenty sheets of lead, God knows, I would say twenty sheets of prose. Can ne'er be, deemed worth half so much as one of gold, and yours was such. Thus, the preliminaries settled, I fairly find myself pitch-kettled, one. And cannot see, though few see better, how I shall hammer out a letter. First, for a thought, since all agree, a thought, I have it, let me see, tis gone again, plague on't. I thought I had it, but I have it not. Dame Girton thus, and Hodge her son, that useful thing, her needle, gone. Rake well the cinders, sweep the floor, and sift the dust behind the door, while eager Hodge beholds the prize in old Grimalkin's glaring eyes, and Gammer finds it, on her knees, in every shining straw she sees. This simile were apt enough, but I've another, critic proof. The virtuoso thus, at noon, broiling beneath a July sun, the gilded butterfly pursues, o'er hedge and ditch, through gaps and mews, and, after many a vain essay, to captivate the tempting prey, gives him at length the lucky pat, and has him safe beneath his hat, then lifts it gently from the ground, but, ah! Tis lost as soon as. Found. Culprit his liberty regains, flits out of sight, and mocks his pains. The sense was dark. Twas therefore fit with simile to illustrate it, but as too much obscures the sight, as often as too little light, we have our similes cut short, for matters of more grave import. That Matthew's numbers run with ease, each man of common. Sense agrees. All men of common sense allow that Robert's lines are easy too. Where then the preference shall we place, or how do justice in this case? Matthew, says fame, with endless pains smoothed and refined the meanest strains nor suffered one ill-chosen rhyme to escape him at the idlest time, and thus o'er all a luster. Cast, that, while the language lives shall last, and please your ladyship, quoth I, for tis my business to reply. Sure so much labor, so much toil, bespeak at least a stubborn soil. Theirs be the laurel wreath decreed, who both write well, and write full speed, who throw their helicon about as freely as a conduit spout. Friend. Robert, thus like Chian Savon lets fall a poem on passant, nor needs his genuine ore refine, tis ready polished from the mine.